Welcome to the Mosomic Memes Microphone Guide. My name is Mikko Savanto. In this episode, I continue going through the basics of Memes microphones. In this one, I concentrate on the ASIC and functionality of a Memes microphone. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. The ASIC is another crucial building block of a MEMS microphone. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. It's a semiconductor device in a MEMS microphone that supports the MEMS sensor and enables outputting a usable signal out of the microphone. The properties of the ASIC affect a lot of different microphone characteristics. Sensitivity, self-noise, distortion, frequency response, phase characteristics, current consumption, and RF and ESD immunity. The ASIC receives the output signal from the MEMS sensor and conditions it to be suitable for the next stage in the system. The next stage is either the microphone output in an analog microphone or the analog to digital conversion in a digital microphone. The ASIC contains also electrical connections that enable forming connections in and out of the chip. The connections are typically done either with bond wires or by soldering the chip onto contact pads on a circuit board. The ASIC does also disturbance filtering and possibly ESD filtering to keep the signals clean and safe. The ASIC also provides biasing for the MEMS sensor. Biasing is a charge applied between the membrane and the backplate of a capacitive sensor. It's typically provided by a component called charge pump within the ASIC. Some microphone types, for example piezoelectric sensors, don't necessarily need biasing at all. The biasing is needed in capacitive microphones because of the way they operate. The mechanical movement of a capacitive microphone membrane in relation to the backplate causes the capacitance of the sensor to vary. This variation is converted into an electrical signal based on the capacitance equation you see here. Output voltage equals charge divided by the varying sensor capacitance. The operation of the capacitive sensor requires that there is a constant charge, Q, across the capacitor plates. This charge is provided by the biasing system in the ASIC. The ASIC can also contain systems, such as a system to power the microphone in a controlled way without disturbances in the output during startup, an oscillator needed for the charge pump used for the sensor element biasing in analog microphones. In digital microphones, the digital clock provided to the microphone is used to time the charge pump. The ASIC can also include clock detection circuitry to detect the presence of a clock as well as the clock frequency in digital microphones. Detecting the clock frequency enables controlling the functionality of the microphone by changing the clock frequency fed to it. Typically, this is used to switch the microphone between the normal use mode and the power saving low power mode. It's also possible to manufacture the ASIC onto the same semiconductor chip as the MEMS. For example, the late Acoustica used to manufacture microphones based on a single-chip MEMS microphone technology. Some potential advantages of having the electromechanical system and the ASIC on the same chip are reduced overall chip area, as well as very good electrical connection between the sensor and the ASIC, possibly enabling better noise performance and higher disturbance immunity. However, having to manufacture the two systems with the same technology can easily lead to compromises in the performances and functionality of one or both of the systems. Single-chip microphones have not managed to get a lot of traction in the market. Okay, let's talk about the functionality of a MEMS microphone. Sound enters the package through a sound port either on top of the component in the lid or in the bottom of the microphone in the substrate. If the port is in the substrate, it naturally requires that there is a hole also in the device circuit board that the microphone is mounted on so that sound can pass through it. 
The sound travels through the airspace between the sound port and the acoustic sensor, the front volume, and reaches the acoustic sensor element. In the case of a capacitive microphone, the sensor element is a membrane. The sensor element vibrates along with the incoming acoustic pressure oscillations, and the mechanical vibrations are converted into an electrical signal. Like I explained when I talked about biasing, the output voltage of a capacitive microphone is given by this equation. The varying capacitance, Ct, of the sensor element is the denominator in the equation. In the case of a piezoelectric sensor, the oscillating bending or compression of the piezoelectric material induces a voltage that can be output from the sensor. The electrical output signal of the MEMS sensor is received by the ASIC. If the sensor output signal level is not high enough, it may have to be amplified. The amplification is typically a source of noise, so it's typically better if amplification is not needed. If the sensor output signal is strong enough so that it doesn't need an amplifier, a buffer, such as a source follower, may be included in the signal chain instead. In analog output microphones, also the output impedance level may need to be adjusted. This signal is then ready to be output from the microphone. In digital output microphones, the ASIC also converts the analog signal into a digital signal. In a PDM output microphone, the analog signal is amplified if needed. After that, the signal goes through an anti-aliasing filter. It filters out frequencies that could cause artifacts or distortion when the signal goes through the analog to digital conversion process. The converter, ADC, is next in the signal chain. In MEMS microphones, the digital output format is typically PDM, pulse density modulation, but the interface can also be, for example, I2S that carries a PCM signal. I'll talk more about digital interfaces in episode 18. After the conversion, the digital signal goes through the digital interface circuitry that sets up the digital interface. It takes care of things such as determining on which PDM interface channel, left or right, the microphone transmits data. Having the possibility to transmit two separate channels enables connecting two microphones on one PDM data line. After the digital interface circuitry, the signal is output from the microphone. To make system design easier and faster, the electroacoustic performance and uh, functionality of a MEMS microphone can be modeled and simulated. Simulations can be done in the design phase of the microphone to study different uh, design options and optimize the design without the need to spend a lot of time and money on building prototypes and doing testing. Modeling can be done also for the microphone as a part of an acoustic system, such as the sound channel built into the device. This enables also device manufacturers to optimize their designs without building prototypes. The microphone can be modeled with a fairly simple RLC circuit that can look, for example, something like the one we see here. Different acoustic components and phenomena are modeled with different electrical components in the simulation circuit. Acoustic loss is modeled with resistors, masses are inductors, springs are capacitors, and acoustic passages are modeled with RLC filters. The difficulty is, like with any simulation, in getting the component values in the model to match the real-world characteristics of the different parts of the design. MEMS microphones have some significant advantages as compared to traditional microphones that are based on macromechanical structures. Before MEMS technology, Electric condenser microphones, ECMs, were the dominant microphone technology in consumer electronics and other budget and size conscious applications. ECMs are based on macromechanical structures, such as membranes made out of metal coated plastic foil, spacers made out of metal or plastic, and so on. The performance to size ratios of MEMS microphones are superior to ECMs. For example, the signal to noise ratio. SNR that can be achieved for a given small form factor with MEMS is significantly higher. 
ECMs can still achieve higher SNR levels than MEMS microphones, but the sizes of those components are significantly bigger than those of MEMS microphones. Also, the distortion performances of MEMS microphones are superior. The acoustic overload points of high-performance MEMS microphones are at 130 dB SPL or higher. The sensor elements of MEMS microphones are small and light. This enables them to provide very high capturing accuracy, even at very high sound frequencies, even at ultrasonic frequencies. Due to the superior performance size ratio, MEMS microphones enable making devices smaller or including more microphones in each device to, for example, enable noise cancellation and other signal processing systems. Another advantage of MEMS microphones is that they are manufactured with semiconductor manufacturing processes. This makes the manufacturing very repeatable and scalable. Repeatability leads to higher yield, better production economy and, the most important of all, better and very stable microphone quality. This makes also the performance parameters of MEMS microphones, such as sensitivity, face behavior and so on, very stable. Scalability makes it easier to make significant changes in production volumes. Semiconductor materials are also very stable to environmental factors, such as heat and humidity, as compared to traditional plastic-based microphone technologies. This makes MEMS microphones very accurate over time and in different environments. Accuracy is especially important in signal processing systems that use the outputs of multiple microphones to perform precise analysis of signals. The performance price ratios of MEMS microphones are high. With MEMS, one can achieve the level of performance of significantly more expensive microphones. There are also very low-cost MEMS microphone solutions that are suitable for the lowest price points in applications such as toys. The performances of even very inexpensive MEMS microphones are good enough for many less demanding applications. The advantages I've listed here have helped MEMS take over as the leading microphone technology in consumer electronics and many other applications. Especially applications in which sound quality requirements are relatively high, such as high-end smartphones and high-performance speech user interface systems rely on MEMS technology. Let's have a look at the manufacturing of MEMS sensors. Like I said, they are manufactured in semiconductor manufacturing processes out of semiconductor materials. The MEMS process typically starts with a silicon wafer. One wafer is typically 6 or 8 inches, 150 or 200 millimeters in diameter. Thousands of individual MEMS chips can be made out of one such wafer. The moving microelectromechanical structures are formed by alternately etching material off the wafer and depositing more material, new layers, onto the wafer. Masks are used to direct the procedures exactly to the wanted places. This technique enables forming very intricate and complex structures, the smallest dimensions of which are often in the range of only a couple of micrometers. The needed electrical connections are formed from conductive materials to enable connecting the signal received by the electromechanical element to contact pads on the surface of the MEMS chip and to enable providing biasing for the sensor. The finished individual MEMS die are then separated, diced, by sawing or with a laser. I'll save a closer look at MEMS microphone manufacturing to a later video. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to learn about. Okay, that's it for this episode. In episode 13, I'll talk about the goals for the implementation of a MEMS microphone into a device. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any comments or questions, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you like what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel.
That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels, and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management, and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 